the house that I was raised in was a large house. It had a front porch that went around from the front of the house along the side. It was a tall house. If you get into the attic, you probably could see uh, at the center where the roof came up like this, it was about 15 feet. A large house. The second floor had three bedrooms and a bath, all of them very large, which large closets. And we go downstairs, the kitchen was big enough for six people to sit around the table besides being able to cook. Large dining room as well, living room, and a spare bedroom. And the basement was a full basement. One corner of it had coal to keep the house warm in the wintertime. The rest of it was full of shelves, full of canned fruit and vegetables and everything with a big freezer for our meat. I remember so well that house. You see the house? You see the house right now through my eyes. And now if you drive past the house, you can say, oh, there, there's Carl's house that he was talking about. Because you recognize it, because you see the house through my eyes. Manalo talks about the same thing in his dictation that we're studying today, volume 33, number four, 14 of the Pearls of Wisdom. He said, the heavens are opened unto you, beloved. May you see through my eyes the throne of God and the Lord Christ seated upon his right hand. May you see the court of the sacred fire and hierarchies of light and angels and saints, even yet in the etheric octave. We see them through his eyes because he has been there. He can describe it to us. Therefore, it should not be something that's unknown, for we see it through his eyes. He said, heaven is opened. Those who have eyes to see may see the spiral and rungs of light and 33 tears and that which is above and that which is beneath. What is he talking about? He's talking about the 33 levels up of the spirit and 33 levels down the beneath. It starts out with, with the astral plane and then on down to the depths of hell. 33 levels up, 33 levels down. He said, thus I have descended the stairs of the octaves, scaling the stars. Don't you look forward to being able to do the same? We know it's there because he said so. Because he showed it to us. He says, I come to you in this hour as never before. And yet I tell you that one day we shall have this mystery school where those who are in it and of it may form a circle of sacredness and oneness that I might speak to you and others of the ascended host might speak to you without concern that there be some among you who by weakness of character or spirit may choose to go out and repeat our words to the profane 
and even to the press. Blessed hearts, those you understand, thus you understand that it is a sign of the times and of the age that I may not speak freely to my own. But this too shall pass, for we enter a new day, and I have ways of communicating with my own and the, of sealing the light and the, the message. In this hour then, hour of the celebration of my ascent to God, his, his ascension, I am grateful to be in your midst. I place my hand therefore upon the fractured ones that they may be made whole and no longer feel the need to compromise this community, to get even, to settle old scores, attacking the messenger instead of their own dweller on the threshold. Oh, I've watched that in the past. When I was on staff, and when I started traveling, people would come up. I remember one, for instance, one lady who said to me, could I have an appointment with you? And the whole hour I spent with her was her attempts to get me to reject the messenger as well. But she had a large part in in the recording of the music and so on that we sing every day, you say, what happened? What's, what, what's going on inside of them? They are the fractured ones. You just can't get past these things that's in the, in, in the innermost parts of one's being that fights the reality of almighty God. She said, I, I am with you, beloved, each and every one. And while there is opportunity, I assist those among you from the least to the greatest, for the door has not yet closed. An opportunity is to repent, to seek forgiveness, to enter the Holy of Holies, and of thy God, and to serve the light in wholeness and holiness. You know, it'll be good for us just to sit down and think, what is holiness? What does it mean to me? You can go to the dictionary, you don't get much, because it's a feeling, it's a oneness, is one thing I can feel when I'm really in it because tears come to my eyes. I know when it's really happening because my, my hair stands up and things are happening within me. I can sense it. This is what we need to be looking for and developing this holiness unto almighty God. He said, on this anniversary of my victory, I have come to stay in an extraordinary way. I place my electronic presence with every keeper of the flame and defender of the light and every devotee of the mother of the world in this state, which was when he gave the dictation, he was in Montana. He said, I make it my purpose, therefore, to seek for your protection, for your sustaining grace, for your cutting through and, the, and arriving at El Moria's timeline. And now it is a day of opportunity to bring forth light, to bring forth sons of God who shall be given the opportunity to restore earth to her natural magnificence. You are in the moment of transition, wherein God has placed 
a single drop of golden holy oil. And the angels of intention, precise, have dropped upon the crown chakra that single drop of holy oil. And the dried up chakra begins to have life and light from the sun begins to unfold. And thus, you have, as it were, an antenna that is able to receive light from the great central sun and wisdom. And once again, you walk the earth as enlightened beings. Now you must pass through the eye of the needle, beloved. And that is the supreme test for all. You cannot expect another to pass through the eye of the needle for you. You must create the needle and the eye and pass through it yourself. Pity upon those of you who expect others to do it for you. For you already come to an hour of reckoning. Yet, I shall invoke for you the divine helper. Pity upon those who have not heard or listened. We know them well. I come in this hour for a mighty sealing. I come to see you to seal your chakras with a holy communion. I come, beloved. And I represent a holy order of saints in heaven as I am robed in a robe of delicate off-white wool. And I wear a metallic golden rope belt with sandals. And I do carry my notebook of things I have to tell you this evening. I hold a book bound at inner levels of the ashram notes. And now in gratitude to all concerned, I say it may be physical and it may be entrusted to your hearts. I promise you, beloved, that I will impart to you the wine of the spirit and the bread of life if you will read these ashram notes slowly and offer the rituals in between, seeking not to devour them all at once and therefore not digesting them, but understanding that the terse statements and the cups of light and the words of wisdom are for your Christhood, for a deep foundation in the consciousness of God. This is really, really tough stuff. All we have to do is slow it way down and really get it in here. And we get discouraged real quick because it's not going fast enough. Not realizing that in our skipping through it, we miss the depth of understanding. Take it easy, read a few bit words, meditate, really open the heart and let it go in drop by drop. He said, you will, uh, you will assimilate the word as you give devotion to these rituals, as you give your visualizations, and as you see yourself truly an outpost of the divine, as the light, light, light all glorious flows through you, flows through your chakras, and you direct that light consciously with the intensity of your inner vision, your mind, your will, the love of your heart, and all of your desiring to save souls of light in any and all octaves. Never has there been an hour 
when it has been more necessary for you to keep the flame for the light bearers of earth, as beloved Alpha has told you. And this is part of this whole emergency right now with the light bearers in, in Afghanistan. We have to begin to really understand what's going on and why we are willing to open this door and try to do all we can to pick them up and bring them to safety. Some of you remember the story of Igor, whom Mother Mary tutored, who kept the flame for Mother Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution. Through his heart, she did release light whereby many were spared. And the Holocaust of that event was greatly reduced by the single saint who willed to keep the flame. He was an embodiment, beloved, and did earn his ascension by that service. Thus, look at what we have a chance to do today in the next two days, earning our ascension by picking up the necessary situation and doing something about it. He said, you are many, and you are called to keep the flame for planet Earth. But specifically, you are called to hold the light for the light bearers. This is your mission in the heart of the stupa or the church or the community. May you not forget, beloved, that harmony is the key, not only to your victory, but to the victory of many on the planet. You cannot direct light for their salvation if you allow yourself to become overly conscious of your own and, uh, or, and other personalities and to become embroiled in argumentation and discord. You cannot direct for their, for their salvation if you allow yourself to become overly conscious of your own and others' personalities and to become embroiled in argument and discord and criticism and condemnation, etc., etc. Thus, beloved, if you do so, you will compromise your protection. That is our protection, which we would send into your midst. At no time in your entire existence has harmony had a greater import to the future of your soul your physical life and posterity and the planet as a whole. Thus I tell you, everything you have read and learned and heard from the ascended masters ought to come before your gaze and pass through your mind. And I say, may you pass your test with an unmitigated love and fearlessness flame and the determination to be in the flame of God harmony. This is an initiation in the God quality and its perversions on the six o'clock line in the heart of the earth. It is an initiation of the Divine Mother. I trust that you will not show the karmic board that all of your years in the conferences and services have been wasted for your loss of the lesson to be strong, to be harmonious, to be fruitful, and to know that every spare moment must be in prayer, in oneness with God on behalf of all light bearers upon this planetary home. Remember, Isaiah 
26, 3. He has perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He shall have perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He said, for the day shall come when all shall be initiated and each individual shall find his true levels of achievement or none, of attainment or none, stripped of all but the garment of the soul, whether they are in physical embodiment or not, all are stripped. And each one must make his way going on that attainment which he has gained. This is the final exam of the Piscean age. I think we talked, we use this in terms of it's a dark night of the spirit or soul. It's when everything is cut off and you are what you have developed. He said, I took my exams early, beloved, that I might graduate early and bring you to the point of, the, of a most possible victory. It was and is necessary for me to be at this level, and I am in the presence. I am in the Holy One of God. I come in the flame of holiness this night. The holiness of an inner order of saints, an order of saints who have been at the throne of God and with the Lamb in the midst thereof, who have sung their songs and their praises, and who have returned in this hour to be with those saints in embodiment. If you have never known what holiness is, beloved, may you begin to know it now. Make it be the shine upon your face and the light in your eye. May it be the dedication of your heart and the inclining of the ear to those in need. What are they really saying to you? May holiness be honor and compassion. May it be forgiveness. May it also be the sternness that rebukes the dalliance of those who do nothing and expect others to do it for them. But may it also be a softening that their babies might be born by angels in embodiment. This is the moment when the true meaning of community of the Holy Spirit worldwide must be experienced and cherished beyond all else. This community is the ark itself and the strength of the Lord. Your tying in to the strength of this community must come from an inner strength. Oh, take your bow of, of your bowl of nice. I'm sorry. Oh, take your bowl of rice. Chew it well and give your count to nine decree before you allow the telltale sign of discord to erupt. There are enough volcanoes to erupt on planet Earth, beloved, without our having to contend with the eruption of an astral body of our chilas. Take care, therefore, that you exercise restraint and take dominion over the forces in this body. If you are not prepared to this moment, then I say, you have no other choice but to take a giant leap across the rapids of the unconscious self. And I will be on the other side with outstretched arms. And I will catch you, though the rivers seem wide and dangerous. 
I will catch you. And then you must conform to my electronic presence and Christhood and yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I have come this day for the renewing of your minds, beloved, that you might be renewed to step into the shoes of your Christhood. <clears throat> Thus, I come to give you that maximum opportunity to be who you are and to make it. I profoundly pray that you will abandon those lesser ways and those out of alignment states and with the love pursue the holiness of God with your attention upon the Lord, your mighty I am presence. He has perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He has perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Oh, beloved, our hearts, our witness, we two together, Manalo and Mother, are here to give all of our love for your victory. It is an hour when you can go off that drink of victory, when you can make it, and it is an hour when by non-decision, indecision, or recalcitrance, you may make a half-hearted attempt to take that cup, but then allow yourself to dash it in pieces to fulfill your own doubts and fears. People fail so that they might, may fulfill their own doubts and fears and say, you see? I told you I couldn't do it. I told you I wouldn't be able to do it. Why did you make me try? Thus, as false prophets, they accurately predict their own demise. Let this not be, beloved. Sense the will of our loving. Sense the determination of our loving you. Sense the reality of our caring and respond. Oh, respond, beloved, and know the holiness of the Lord in your temple, in your minds. What a wondrous temple God has created for your soul. Let then your heart merge with ours, for we are here for one purpose, to see you through to the finish and to the opening of the door to the new day. Seal the mind, steal the mind, beloved. And then he makes a very interesting comment and you've already been here today. Let me also suggest we do it again. He says, there is no room for any other thought in your mind than this. Now pick up what you did earlier and repeat with me again. Let's see if we can bring this into a singular pattern. So together, I will live. I will finish my course. I will fulfill my destiny. I will be in God on earth. I will not surrender my life for neglect, nor the life of my brothers, my sisters, nor the life of my children who do the will of God. I will firmly entrench in this battle of light and darkness. I am, I am that I am in me, the victor preordained. I am the victor, and I prophesy it. 
and I will fulfill my prophecy by the grace of God. I will live to see the Lord's blessing. I will not sign away my life or my dates. I will let the Lord set the dates of my life and I will remain. I will remain with the Lord Krishna on earth and in heaven. I will remain to heal the sick, to feel the to remain this the star of God in the depths of the astral sea and in the heart of Mother Mother. With Christ, I will remain. I will remain as above, so below, in nirvana and in perpetual motion, securing the hearts of these children of God. I will open my life and see what wonders God worked through me. I will open my arms. I will not be concerned with what anyone says of me, but I will speak the truth and strive for the truth and let the truth cast out the air of all condemnation born of doubt and fear. I will remain. I will remain on earth as long as my Lord does decree it. I will remain to assist all others in the earth. God needs my lips to speak the teachings. God needs my heart to overflow with his own life blood. God needs my mind in the storehouse of information as a send a master teaching that I might speak to the weary one, to the one who is in despair, who has given up, or who in his pride has denied even the message of the messenger. I will remain for my life is worth something. I will remain until I see the holiness of my God in my flesh. I will remain until the scales are removed from my eyes and I too may see the etheric levels. I shall And the multitude of saints of God who look down with pity and compassion, I will be their helpers. I will be the helper of the divine helper. I will be, I will be, I will be. This is my key in life. I will be God where I am. And I know that I need not go anywhere to be my God. Though I will remain, I am the heartbeat of God. I am pulsation's oneness. My heart, thy heart, thy heart, my heart. And now, O oh Lord, I seal my saying, and I go forth with staff in hand, and through that rod I bear, my God does transmit a lightning to the earth. I am riveted in the earth, and I shall know my victory, because the Lord has need of me. I shall remain. I shall remain with Krishna in the earth, in the heaven. O cosmic Christ, Lord Jesus, there is only one. There is only one God. And then the master continues. This then is the promise I have made to you. Some in one lifetime, some in another. To some it is the ancient promise, for our prayers have not, our paths have not crossed in recent centuries. Our karmic paths have taken us each in opposite directions. To some, the promise has been given more recently, but I have promised to be with you and to help you. I am come as a divine helper. Now I say, do it, and I will do it through you. If you do not do it, I can do nothing through you. This is the physical test of the physical octave in the physical sign of Pisces. And you have been preparing for it for long centuries. 
I am proud of many of you, for you have found the momentum of perpetual service, perpetual service, perpetual prayer, perpetual meditation. You have found it under the exercises of the hour. You have found the fire, beloved. Some of you have lost the fire and you found it again. Eureka. Yes, beloved. These are the tests that, ch that chilas are made of. These are the tests that gurus give when they say, well, we have some who are ready. If we turn the, turn the screws, the lily of the heart will unfold and the threefold flame whoosh, and the Holy Spirit and the breath and the kindling fire. And once again, the flame is restored. Some lost the flame thousands of years ago and now are finding it truly in the fire truly in the fire of the word and the work, which are no longer two, but one. Now, my beloved, go forth in fearlessness flame. Fear, doubt, unbelief, and, and death are unreal, and I banish them in the name of Vajrasattva this night. If you hear my beloved speaking to you, listen well, for it will be I. It will be Moria speaking through her. Listen to the words, follow the directions and heed them. For remember, I told you that our direct communication to you has been compromised. Use the rituals. Listen with the heart. We will not fail you, but you must be in your right place. We need the listening ear. We need the listening ear. I bring you fire from the altars of heart. Of God, sorry. I bring you fire from the altars of God. And I bring this bread as I give to you in Christ's name, my body and my blood. For truly, this is my body, which is broken for you. And this is my blood of the everlasting gospel. I give my life for my sheep gladly. Drink then of this my life essence. Partake of my body. I come to strengthen and to balance. In the heart of the Lord Christ Jesus, I say, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. On this occasion, as each year prior to the amount, of, uh, prior to the moment and the hour of the reconstruct, uh, recon, reconsecration of my ascension, I journey to the sun and return again that I might give to you fire for fire. I can give you only that portion which is the equivalent of that which you already have. Thus I bring the balance of spirit that you who abide in, the ma in matter as the omega polarity in the guru chila relationship can receive fire for fire. I come then with this holy communion to complete and make whole that which you yourself have already gained from the altar of heaven. If you desire more of me, beloved, then I say, 
require of your soul to gather more of thee, more of thee and thy life and thy presence, more of the God from the sun. The rituals Moria envisioned many years ago in the ashram wrote notes will assist you in this process if you take time to give them with deep prayer and deep meditation. Thus, beloved, receive now fire from, for fire from my heart. Then keep mine as your own for the next round when I give, <clears throat> when I give you again myself as our communion. Take now and drink, drink ye all of it, and receive me to your heart, that I may assist in God's heart. <laughs>